Hey guys, welcome back to the uh, series on the Ansonia clock uh, rebuild. Well, we're up to the rebuild. We've done, over the past three episodes, we've done a, an inspection and dismantle and a big chat about things and we've cleaned it all and we've done the springs and we've polished the pivots. It wasn't going to be this long a series, but I wanted to show you all the steps and I'm still learning all this myself and I thought I might as well film everything. So I hope you're enjoying it. So this episode, we have all our parts um, I've cleaned them again. I'd actually just washed them in IPA. I didn't worry about putting them through the ultrasonic cleaner again. But after polishing the pivots, I thought it was important to give them another quick clean. Uh, so all those parts, we're going to put between these two plates, hopefully in the right order. Hopefully it works. Uh, I'd love to do the old YouTube, YouTuber's trick of laying them all out and filming it and then putting a white sheet over and then going abracadabra and it's together. And some of the videos you see on clock repairs, that's about as much information as you get. So in this one, I'm going to set the camera up. I apologize in advance because my fingers and hands are going to get in the road because it is fiddly, but I'm going to try and leave it run unedited and show you as much as I can as I put this together. Um, it is very fiddly to get the plates back together and all the pivots lined up. And then we've got to sort out some timing with the uh, strike train, a couple of the wheels need to be timed but i think we can do that at the end let's get it all together first and uh, hopefully that goes well and then once we've done that we will then uh, lubricate it and we should be able to see it running so let's get set up and i'll start assembling and hopefully you get a good view and i don't sort of obscure stuff too much i've got gloves on i don't normally wear gloves and it's taking me a while to get used to them but you do have to watch getting fingerprints over things it's not such a problem with these sort of clocks, although I guess if you've got a nice finish on the brass, it will um, it will show up and, and oils from the human skin can actually cause a little corrosion on the brass and certainly discolour it. If you've got a really nice clock, some of them have beautiful machining patterns on them, you'd certainly want to keep fingerprints off that. I think I'm getting a bit of reflection here, so sorry about that. Can't do much with the angle here at the moment. Anyway, hopefully I've done obscure your view too much whilst I'm concentrating and sometimes I might even go off camera for which I apologize for in advance. First thing we've got to put the count wheel on and we can see the the wear mark where it goes so we get that on the right way. I'm not sure what happens if you put it upside down. Maybe the clock counts backwards. I don't know. And the little clip here has a locator at the end of it which drops in that hole. So that should just slide under there. And that's fine. So we will oil all this when we're finished. Um, now, we'll start with this plate here. The section here in the middle has to be over that way before we put the center arbor in because that has some little pins that move it. I think that's something to do with the strike movement or mechanism. Uh, we're going to start down the bottom with the main springs and then work our way up. I've seen some guys assemble them the opposite direction. Uh, I don't know that it makes a great deal of difference. I think it's probably just easier to get these mainsprings in and locate them first. So put the loop over the post and we should be able to just flex that enough to drop the arbor in underneath. And that doesn't seem to want to locate properly. Oh, it's just flicked out. You do have to make sure your retainer clamp is central. We don't want the spring flying out here. I haven't got leather, glo leather gloves on. I have got glasses on, but they wouldn't probably do much with an exploding main spring. But if the clip's central, it should be perfectly fine. And getting this lined up would be very tricky if you had other wheels already in position. I'm sure they'd all fall out. There we go. That's located nicely now. Um, the retaining spring can get in the road of some of the other arbors, but it will flex around a bit. And that's why it's important to leave a bit of a tail on it so that you have a bit of room to move it. So that's got the strike side in. 
we can now put the oh sorry the time side we can now put the strike side in and exactly the same deal and you can see how far it has to go across and it's much easier working from underneath or at least viewing from underneath and you can see when it drops in uh, and that's home yes all right that's the easy part done so now i'm not sure of the sequence i think we might work our way up the time side first hang on we're the right direction that's got to go around oh that's on the right side yep so perhaps we can put the center arbor in now just sits in the middle these three are the first ones to go through our other plate and then we have let's work on the time side uh, the next biggest one should go in next and that drops in next to the great wheel and that must mesh on the center arbor does it i'm not sure i think it does and we probably should have a little stand i think this is okay this way but i know if you're working on some movements i've seen guys have them on special stands i've seen them sitting on uh, a cut off piece of large poly pipe to allow for any things yeah we see we do have our our little arbors poking through i've got a little bit of give on the towel obviously so i think this will be okay and it stands off a little bit on these brackets so we have a an intermediate wheel here i think this one goes in here like so and then we have our hour tube that goes on top so that's all the center part assembled there and then we have three other wheels uh, and the escape wheel. These ones are almost the same size. Yeah, come in. Christine's come for a visit. But I did say to all you guys that I wasn't going to edit this section and it could go for a long time. So I've come bearing food. Christine's come with some afternoon tea. Damn it, I'm going to have to let it watch me while I finish this because I can't edit this part <laughs> well Coco will have it I'm sure Coco will help me out a veggie might snack. thank you it's probably not quite on camera do you want to just show them I've got gloves on what uh, are we doing Vegemite yeah Vegemite snack, on snack for all those people that don't know what Vegemite is <laughs> Vegemite is delicious guys <laughs> but if you try it don't put too much on <laughs> there's some really good youtube videos of people trying veggie yeah. okay that one goes in there see i'm multitasking i'm holding a conversation and putting this together i think that one goes up that way and i think i mentioned earlier in this might have been the last episode that usually a, a large wheel well i think always a large wheel runs to a small pinion and generally the wheels get smaller as you go and the escape wheel fits under here. So there's our time side done. And of course, this is the easy part. Getting the other plate on is the problem. And then we have nothing left in the time side tray. Nothing at all there except my Vegemite biscuit. Uh, we do also have the pellet or verge or whatever it's called. I'm not too sure. And that part, I think, goes through the top plate. But it needs to fit under there. And hopefully that kind of stays in the right position. Now, on the other side, we have a very complicated timing thing here, which allows it to chime at the right time, to well, to strike at the right time, because it's not a chiming clock. And it also activates the warning wheel, and counts that's the little part that goes in the count wheel over there and it goes in i don't know where now 
and there's a spring that has to hook around this post. And I can't even see where that goes in at the moment. Oh, it must go, yeah, there's the hole underneath that bottom lever. Now, I don't know if that should go in first or not, because we have to somehow work other gears in around it, or wheels. I've got to keep calling them wheels, not gears. I think I also called them cogs earlier. And the hammer feeds right up through the middle and drops in that hole there. That also has a spring that has to hook up. You can see it's getting more complicated by the second. Now, we have three wheels here. We have, this one's a plain one. This one has pins on it, which I think uh, operate the hammer. Or maybe these operate the hammer. Oh, look, I haven't done enough of these to know, but hopefully it all falls into place. So this one will go, now this is a tricky bit. Get that little spring in the right place. I hope this is coming out okay on camera. I don't want to have to run through all this again. And I know you've got a bit of reflection, but hopefully it's not too bad. So that spring goes over that post. And that's going to throw everything out of whack. And then this one fits under here. And I'll have to flex the main spring around a bit to get it in the bottom hole. Ah, that main that spring clamp's really awkward. It's in the road a bit. And I have seen these main spring clamps that are a flat steel rather than a round steel, and I think that would probably work better. Okay, I think that's all right. Now the next one, I think, is oh, that's I think that's the warning wheel. This is uh, I can't remember the terms for them. The top of that one drives the count wheel, which is on the other plate. This one goes in here. And there's a little notch to accommodate that lever. And I'll be amazed if all this works first go. All right, we have a problem. This gear is leaving, or this wheel is leaning over too far because it's hitting the retainer of this spring. What can we do about that? I can't slide the retainer off because it's holding the power of the spring. It should roll out of the road a bit. Okay, now. All right, that's dropped in. But I may well have that retainer in slightly a bad position. Or maybe I didn't leave enough tail on the spring. Something to be aware of. So now we need to fit this one. And I think that goes here yeah, under there. And that's in. There's still a bit of pressure on this wheel from the spring retainer. So I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. And then the fly is the last part.
All right, so that everything is in its place. It's just that we now to put need to put this in its place. Uh, so let's see how we go. So we've got to slip it over the main mainspring arbors and the center hour tube. So that's good. Now. Now here's where I'm going to have to maneuver it around a lot and hopefully you don't lose vision or get some glaring reflection. Put a bit of downwards pressure on it. We need to locate it somehow onto the posts. All right, a little bit there. We seem to have a lot of uh, a lot of pressure required. I mean, you can't press down hard because that's why you're going to bend a pivot. Let's just start the nut on this one. It's very hard to do with gloves on. Well, I don't like wearing gloves. You lose a bit of dexterity, I feel. Right, nuts just started. But it's got to move down a fair bit. So what's stopping it? Let's turn it round. Have a peek in it sideways. All right, there's the hammer. Not really stopping it. Oh, I know it's stopping it. The um, pendulum part, whatever it's called. All right, that's got that up out of the road. Still won't press down properly. And I'm not putting very much pressure on it because I don't want to force anything. Hopefully gears don't fall out completely. The hammer. Aha, uh -huh, that's what's stopping it. It's come out of the bottom. It's got it. So we've gained a little bit. This is again, oops, our pendulum swing arm things drop down. This is a game of millimetres. Every millimetre is a win. Okay, we've got the second post on. Let's get a little nut started on there. Right, now the top of the hammer pivot will be next that's in it's pushing down a little further good right and do the nuts up a little bit more why is that nut tight we'll put it up that way oh these gloves are a pain Maybe I've got two shorter fingers. They might have been the extra large gloves. I don't know. I didn't buy them. I found them in someone's shed. Where, where do I get all my stuff from? All right. So what's next? We've gained a few millimetres. We can work our way along here now. The next wheel on the... Now I'm going to put my magnifiers on here, so if they just pop into the corner of your screen, try to ignore it, because I'll have to get close. Okay, we'll work our way along. Well, we've done the, the first wheel on the time side. And we'll go to the, oops, that's just dropped out. That's going to happen a bit. Oh, speaking of dropping out, 
that's the couple of wheels have come out of there our plates on a big angle that's not ideal but I think we can put them back in we've got to get into the intermediate wheel in the middle I think that's our next problem Okay, that went in. Right. Be nice if we could get a nut on the other end here. But we need to put those other wheels in that fell out. Let's get this first wheel back in. Yes, I think I'm going to buy some thinner mainspring clamps. These ones appear to be causing a bit of grief. Okay, first wheel's in again. But we've got something holding the plates apart this end. Ah, it's that big lever. That would oh no it's not. That's loose. Alright, maybe it's the wheel on this side. Am I going off camera? I don't know. Right, that's the first wheel that side. Ah, the other one dropped out. Ah, I think the posts were holding us off. Alright, that might be better with the posts down a bit. But we do need to get these wheels back in. Okay, we're gaining some space here. So this wheel went, oh, that's the one from the, oh, when did that come out? I didn't even see that one come out. This one goes in here, I think, or is it this one? I think it's that one. No, it's not that one. Well, that's the escape wheel. That's last. Must be this one. Okay, I can't give you commentary all the time. I'm concentrating, so maybe you can, maybe you can put some of your favourite music on, because uh, I'm not about to start playing music on my videos, even if it is royalty free. All right, that's fallen down too far. That's got to come further up the top. Is it the verge, the pallet, the 
pendulum rod, I'm not sure. But that's about where it goes. Right. We're back on track. We've got these other gears in. Except the one on this side. And I think this is the warning wheel. And it goes under here. Of course, the trouble is spreading the plates apart to get something in when something else falls out. Let's put the bottom pivot in first if we can. Let's take the fly out, it's in the road. And maybe we'll put top pivot in, that's better. Then drop it down. Now we'll put the fly back in. Okay, we're back on track. So you can see a job like this requires a lot of patience. I'm hoping my phone battery has the same amount of patience. And whether you have fast forwarded through this or not, I hope you've enjoyed it. And enjoyed the music you chose to play, if you're sick of my commentary. Alright, the middle, that's good. That just dropped in. That's the lever assembly. I think that was holding us up before. And... Right, that's the one that operates the hammer. Whoops, won't drop in. Come on. Okay, that's in. All right, I feel we're getting somewhere. That part's still not right, but we'll get that in later. All right, let's get this wheel on this time side. In there. Gonna be really resist the urge to push hard because these pivots are so small and they can get bent. Let's lift that plate a little. Slide it across. So I think you're best to move the pivots with the tweezers on the actual pivot, not on the arbor. Why isn't that dropping in? I have seen guys use little hook tools, but I don't know. They look a little awkward to me. Ah, oh, good. The one went in. Now, I believe we can probably start a nut on this one now. It's just started. Now, I'm thinking... You would get better at these the more you do. I would hope so. Now. Maybe I'll put that nut on prematurely. We need a bit extra movement in here. There's less and less parts rattling around, so that's got to be good. I 
Well, that's going to go, I think. In the right angle. Yep, that's in. The escape wheel. Oh, the plate went down on the corner post there quite a lot. We may have to lift him up a bit, but we'll just do the nut down a fraction. And our pivots here for the pallet or verge or whatever that thing's called. Oh, we have to open the plates up a bit to get that in, but I don't think I'll worry about that just yet. Let's get these other ones right. I think we're all still in on these. Just this wheel here. That felt about right. And we will have to lift these out to get the timing right, but I think we've actually got them nearly all in. Just looking at all the pivots on the plate here. So we just have the the pallet here, the rocking thing that does the tick tocking. We're getting highly technical now. Now I'm not sure if the other levers are in the right position. I think they are. But we will have to check the the count wheel thingo. And our spring's still connected here. We don't have the spring for the hammer hooked on yet. So let's I think we'll have to lift it up a little bit to get this pallet thing in. Let's get the bottom in. How much room do we need? Just a little. Nothing else has dropped out at the moment. Whoa, that's good. I think they're all in. Oh, the strike side's working beautifully. We'll have to check the timing, but that's all in. What's the time side doing? Okay, the pellet's not working properly. Is that in? I think that's going to work. I think that's in properly. There is a little bit more wear in that pivot on the escape wheel than what I first thought. In fact, one of those other ones seems to be moving a lot more than what I thought when I tested it earlier. Maybe it does need rebushing, but I think we'll just finish this video as far as putting this back together and have it running. And, uh, once I get some bushes and some tools to be able to do that, I might revisit this movement. But I think that's all together okay. That's working okay. I'm not sure why it doesn't drive from that wheel. Or very difficult to move it in gloves all the same. Works fine from the escape wheel. Okay, let's put some nuts on it before it falls apart again. We have the suspension ring to, spring to put on. So what I'll do is I'll put the nuts on now. You've seen how long it's taken to assemble this. I would like to think I'll get a lot quicker at it, but it is a fiddly job. And we still have to set up the timing on the strike side. But I believe we've got all the wheels in in the right spots. I think it'll run. We can actually try it dry before we assemble it anymore. Um, so we'll put the suspension spring on shortly. But I'm going to do the nuts up now. And uh, I'll mount it somewhere and we'll see if we can actually have it ticking. Uh, once, of course, we can 
um, wind up the springs and take the clamps off. Maybe that's, I think that might be why it's struggling to run off this gear. I think there's a bit extra pressure on this side from the main spring clamp. It's just too close. So, yeah, I reckon that's what's causing us troubles there. Anyway, I'll, um, I'll get these gloves off because I'm just sick of them. And I'll tighten the nuts up and we'll uh, have a look at it and see if we can get it running. Okay, biscuit time. It's about 34 degrees in the shed here. Um, I've got a, a fan going, but it's pretty warm. So the gloves just made my hands sweaty. I found them very awkward. So if you do a lot of clockwork, let me know. Do you use gloves on these? Uh, I, I know you certainly need finger cots on watches because they're much more delicate and oil from your skin's enough to muck up the mainspring and that sort of stuff. As far as these clocks go, is general practice to use gloves? I don't know. Maybe I should just do it on a cooler day. Anyway, I'll finish my biscuit. We'll put it back together as far as the nuts go. I'll wind up the mainsprings. We'll take the clamps off. I'll show you that. And uh, then we'll see if we can get a tick-tock. So I was just about to tighten all the nuts up and realised that we can't yet because we have to get the timing right here. And I've taken the fly back out because it's easy to get in and out right on the corner. And what we need to do is make sure that the lever here drops into the count wheel central on those holes, especially the deep holes. And when I was just moving it before, you can see it's trying. Let's get you a closer look. Hopefully the re reflection is not a problem. And as I'm moving it, the lever isn't dropping into the holes at all. It's it's out of it's out of time with the count wheel. So we have to take this wheel out and move it around a couple of cogs or a couple of like teeth uh, until we get this lined up so that the lever drops right into the count wheel. So that's the first thing to get the timing on. So to do that, we're going to have to risk everything by loosening the nuts off again. Probably just to this side. And we have to be able to get this wheel out, or at least one end pivot out, which means these other ones are probably going to drop out. Hopefully we don't lose anything over on the other side. They're loose, but not by much. We need to kind of spread the plate a little bit. Uh, this one is definitely going to drop out. There we go, that one's out. So we need this one just actually to drop enough to rotate it without... I think we need to adjust it on not just this up here. Actually, that's clear of the gear now. So we can move that one tooth. So I don't think we lost the one at the back. Just this one here. Is our back one still right? No, it's come out. Oh no, that's okay. Alright, I think we're good. So now let's see if... Ah, that's good. Did you see that dropped right in? So if we take that out and turn it a bit more. Oops, I have to go past that deep slot. No, it's out of whack. All right, something wasn't quite aligned. Let's try that again. Actually, we can just slip that past without taking these out. I think that worked. See how we go here with the deep slot. No, that's not working either. All right, maybe we need to adjust the timing on the back wheel. Yes, it's the timing relationship between this wheel and the one at the back. So we have to move that one by a tooth, which means we will have to take that one out. Not completely out. 
just enough to disengage the mesh and turn it one tooth. Okay, perhaps the secret is to to have the lever in a deep hole when we put the gears in, which means that that bottom gear has to be turned around more. Okay, I think that's timed. Now we just need to get these pivots back in. Once again. And I bet you we've lost something out of here. Yes, we have. I think that's all dropped into place. Let's see how we go now. Yes, very good. The levers dropped to the bottom of the deep hole. And as we rotate around, that's fairly central in those holes. Beauty. I'm Comfortable with that being timed right now. Let's just check. Are you still in shot? Sorry, I might have drifted off. Let's just check now that it drops down into that deep hole. Beautiful and nice and central. Excellent. So that's timed. Let's do our bottom nutty up here. Hopefully they don't fall out again. And the next thing we have to do is time the warning wheel. We may fluke it that it is right. All right, so when that drops in the deep hole, our pin is round here and it needs to be round to this side so that it, the little pin there, the lever, stops it. Otherwise, it'll just keep spinning because by the time that pin gets round to the, where the lever is, this would have dropped out, or take come out of the deep hole and it will keep going. So that's okay, we can easily fix that one. So we'll leave that in the deep hole and we should be able to just lift our plate up a little bit without losing the other ones and just get this wheel out, this pivot. Let's 
disengaged from the other wheels. No, it hasn't. All right, now it's disengaged. We need to bring it round so that the pin is at the top there. We should be able to reinstall that now. And I think that will be right. So that's stopped it. So if we release that lever, it goes round through count the count there and drops in the deep hole. Why is it not stop? No, it needs to move around further. Didn't quite get it right. Okay, I've adjusted that again. We need to pull that pin out there. And that works. Let's go around to the next one. So we'll take it to the next deep hole and it should lock there we go locked beautiful that's lined up now so that's all timed all we have to do is put the fly back in which we should not muck anything else up because it kind of goes in pretty easily in the corner and then do all the nuts up that's got it Success. I think we're timed. Yep, that's still locked. All right, let's do the nuts up. And I think we can wind it up now and take the clamps off the springs. Let's nip these up. And we won't do them super tight. And I'll check all the end floats or end shake of the arbors to make sure nothing's binding. And everything else should be good. The last thing we have to do here, and we'll finish this episode off, is we have to put the clicks back or the springs back on the clicks so that we can wind the main springs up and uh, take the clamps off. So we just need to flex the, I'm not sure if you can see that from there, the click will drop down, flex the spring over the top of it, and in these particular ones, yeah, there's a little groove in the back of the click, I think, that it sits in. And there we go. Or has that gone behind it? No, that's in. Yeah, there's quite a, a deep groove in the back of the click for the spring to sit. But check it anyway because you don't want this to let go while the springs are fully wound and there's no retainer on it. So I'll get something a bit stronger than that. The tweezers, the screwdriver here. And we can push the click out and it springs back. Yep, so that one's good. Same with the other side. Then we can get the key and wind the spring up. In fact, we'll do this one now. So the spring is mostly wound anyway, we just need to wind it to remove the pressure from the retainer. Takes a fair bit. All right, the retainer is free. 
and it did have a little bit of pressure on this arbor of that wheel which is why we had trouble turning it so I do need to find myself some spring retainers that are the flat ones rather than the these solid round ones there we go so now that side should be okay to run with the pressure of the spring and it's not running initially but if I do put it up and remember this one was in an angle in the clock there we go she's running straight away and remember it's still dry so uh, that's excellent we must have everything right uh, I have noticed though that there the more I look at these pivots the more I think they really need to be bushed there's uh, quite a bit of movement in there and that is going to cause some grief to the clock I think that one um, there was another one I think the one in there so I need to get more experienced at picking that um, it's certainly difficult to see when the movement's dirty but I did test it after I'd cleaned it and I clearly didn't look closely enough and the one on the escape wheel here does have quite a lot of movement so it's going to run and it once it's oiled it should run quite well and it should last for a while, but it really does need rebushing. When I get the gear to do, to do that, I'll get this clock back apart and I'll replace a few bushes here. Anyway, that's together. That's working. We need to get the retainer spring off this side. And I'm pretty sure that the strike side's all good. So uh, I'll do that now. I'll mount it in a little stand. We'll put the pendulum on it. We'll make sure the chimes are set. Well, sorry, the strike is set properly. And we'll leave it run for... A few days i really should leave it run for the week they're an eight day movement hopefully we get a week out of it but of course we have to oil it so what i might do is i'll i'll get this other retainer off now we'll finish up this episode and uh, then we'll do one more episode of just giving it an oil um, setting the beat well we'll run it in a test stand for a while then we'll put it back in the clock we'll set the beat and uh, that will probably be a shorter episode just to finish up so I've just removed the clamp off the strike spring and I've wound it up and we've seen that the clock runs, it's still ticking here every time I have it at the right angle. So let's just put the minute hand on and we'll demonstrate that we got the strike side right. Um, so half past should just do one gong and you'll see the hammer move. One. And then we go up to the top and you will see it come into warning here. See that little spin and you hear a bit of a whir that happens before you get to the o'clock. And I'm not sure how many hours it's up to here. One, two, three, four, must be five looking at the count wheel. Five and then it stops. So that's good. We got our timing right. Very happy with that. Uh, the clock certainly seems to be running when we have it at the right angle and it will run obviously nicer when it's lubricated and down the track we will certainly need to do the bushings on certainly the escape wheel maybe a few others well if you're still here after all that congratulations it's probably well it definitely is one of my longest videos and I don't expect people to sit through it all but it's the sort of video that I wanted to see when I was learning more about doing this um, I'm really pleased to get it all back together. I'm pleased that it works. Um, I should have been, well, I'm learning. And I know now that I need to pay closer inspections to the bushings. But it will work. We will put it back in the case next episode. We'll give it an oil. We'll set the beat. And the job effectively is finished as far as this video series goes. And I will do a video down the future on rebushing when I learn how to do it myself. So... I hope you've enjoyed a, basically a video on how to by someone that's learning how to as we go. This is the first complete one of these I've ever done. Uh, so yeah, I don't think I made too many mistakes. By all means, add some comments if you like. I know a few clock um, clocksmiths and watchmakers watch my channel from time to time. Usually they get on there and are quite vocal in what I've done wrong. I don't mind that. If it's done in a civil manner, that's great. We can all learn. So thanks for watching this episode. We'll do one more where we oil it and have the thing back in the case. Catch you then. Bye for now.